Hey guys, it's MJ and in this video we're going to be continuing our discussion around finance for the fellowship exam and we're going to be looking at um, foreign investors. So before we've been looking at the main investing classes, being private individuals, financial intermediaries, um, businesses and now we're going to be looking at foreign investors. Okay, and like always, this is an unscripted video. This is me just, you know, studying out loud. Um, I've got quite a skeptical approach, so this video is going to be very much opinion-based. Uh, feel free to join the discussion in the comment section below. If I do forget to say something, I will add it in the comment section. Um, but yeah, this is all going to be opinion-based. Well, I mean, I'm going through the notes, but I'm going to be flavoring it a lot with my opinion. So these videos are just to help me help me study. And thank you so much for joining in. So what we're going to be talking about is foreign investors and foreign investors. I mean, depending on what country you're in, foreign investors are going to play a different role. So I am from South Africa, as many of you already know that uh, the greatest country in the world and so the way South Africans will look at foreign investors will be very different to say how America looks at foreign investors. The role of foreign investors in South Africa will play a much bigger role or a different role to say foreign investors in the United Kingdom or say a European country. So let's look at uh, South Africa. South Africa is considered as an emerging market. Um, so yeah, we're com considered emerging market although if you come to Cape Town you will be surprised because I mean it's a world-class city and it puts all the European cities to shame um, but because we're very diverse and we do have a lot of poverty um, throughout our country we are known as an emerging market now why do foreign investors um, want to invest in South Africa so foreign investors like to come to South Africa because of the fact that we're an emerging market and they might see that we might have um, higher returns. Um, but the main reason for foreign investment is a thing known as diversification. Okay, diversification. I'm assuming you guys are, are very comfortable with finance. I don't have to explain diversification. Um, essentially, you want to have uh, assets that are uncorrelated to reduce the overall volatility of your portfolio. Um, so yeah, foreign investors are attracted to, to our country because of the diversification benefits. And if it was up to them, I mean, they would try and put quite a bit of money into our country uh, to reap the benefits. And they'll put some in South Africa, they'll put some in Kenya, they'll put some in Korea, they'll put some in Brazil. You know, they will, they will spread it around in order to get diversification. Now, the big thing surrounding South Africa is our credit rating. Okay, our credit rating is very important because we must think about the foreign investors and a lot of the foreign investors are massive financial intermediaries, uh, whether they be pension funds or, or these massive um, organizations that basically are playing with billions and billions of, of dollars coming in monthly and they need to put it in somewhere. Now they have rules specifying what they can do with that money. Um, rules could be something like 60% needs to go in the local government bonds. 30% um, might go into, say, uh, stocks. 5% uh, into property and, say, 5% into um, A-rated emerging markets. Okay, it could be something like that. I don't know, the, the way, we'll talk a lot more about portfolio construction and various strategies in other videos. Uh, for now, let's look at this fact that foreign investors have got rules and regulations that say to them that they should be investing outside of the country for diversification benefits. But they can't just go and invest in any country. The country needs to have um, a good credit rating. And the reason why it should have a good credit rating is so that it's not taking on too much risk. I mean, you don't want to be investing in, say, a country like Syria, where with the current war conditions, it's very, very risky and all the money you put in, you might never get out. And credit ratings, I mean, we can do an entire video around them and why I feel they hold too much power 
and why they're actually, in my opinion, bad. Um, but in this video, let's talk more about foreign investors specifically coming to, to South Africa. Okay, what, what are foreign investors um, looking for when they come to an emerging country? Well, the one thing is they, they're very worried about the impact of the currency movement. Okay, so what, what happens specifically here in South Africa is you might get a foreign investor, they come and they buy a beautiful apartment in, say, uh, the Cape Town waterfront, and, uh, you know, they could maybe spend, buy it for, say, 10 million rand, and um, then two years later, and the value is now at 12 million rand. And we might say, wow, that's been a great, uh, great annual return or capital appreciation of 2 million rand. But to the investor, I mean, back here, it was maybe, why is my thing not working? Having a bit of a technical, wait, I think we're back. There we go. Bit of a technical difficulty there. So sorry. So you bought the apartment for 10, 000, uh, 10 million rand and it's now worth 12 million rand, but you can still be unhappy because at this time you might have found that 10 rand was equivalent to $1, whereas now 20 rand is equivalent to $1. I'm just, I'm making, making these stats up um, to illustrate the point. As in before, this was worth, say, $1 million. Why is my thing freaking out? Uh, $1 million, whereas now, at 20 rand, it's only worth, I hope I'm getting this maths correct, uh, $600,000. So though your, your asset has increased in rand terms, it's decreased in dollar terms. And that might be kind of awkward because you might have to pay uh, capital gain tax on the rand increase even though your dollar value's gone down. Although there might be some double tax agreement and you might be able to, if you have a smart accountant on your team, you might be able to get around that. But it would be really awkward to pay tax and taking a loss. So currency movement is, is important for foreign investors. Specifically in South Africa, I mean, our currency has de been depreciating uh, for quite a while. Um, I mean, it is, it is something that scares away foreign investors. Um, that said, I mean, another thing that, that investors don't like are rules and regulations. Okay, specifically rules and regulations that give an advantage to the local people and disadvantage foreigners, because then they're thinking, well, why compete in a country where we have an unfair bias against us? And um, funnily enough, South Africa is one of those countries. I don't know all of the rules and regulations around foreign investment in South Africa, uh, but just based on what I've been seeing in the, in the news and stuff, I mean, we've got, or we want to implement a whole bunch of regulations around foreign investors buying property. Um, you know, we want to make it very difficult for them, or we want to say foreign investors can't do this, can't do that. Um, once you put the capital in, you can't take the capital out. I mean, even at one stage, South Africa had a bizarre, this is quite a few years ago, like maybe 20 years ago, we had two currencies where foreign investors would buy the one currency, then you could exchange the one currency for another currency, and it was all rather complicated. But um, foreign investors don't like rules and regulations that limit the amounts that you can invest in or limit the asset classes you can come into or, or do all these type of things. And South Africa... Um, does have rules and regulations. Another thing foreign investors are not a fan of is something known as political risk. Okay, and I mean, South Africa's neighbor, um, Zimbabwe, is the key example. Beautiful country, everything's going great, great economic prosperity. Government wakes up one morning and is like, we're going to implement a bunch of rules and regulations which we think is going to benefit the country and they had maybe some good intentions, but it had some disastrous uh, financial consequences and wiped out the entire economy. Um, the currency hit hyperinflation, and it was, I mean, your people who invested in Zimbabwe, bought certain financial assets, specifically in the Zimbabwean dollar, got, yeah, it was, was worse than a nightmare. 
Um, so they don't like political risk because political risk, it's very difficult to, to hedge out. Um, it's very difficult to predict. Um, it takes a lot of learning and knowledge of politics. And remember, investors know finance. Now, in order to go in this merging market, they need to understand politics as well. Um, they don't like the idea that politicians can change rules and regulations um, so quickly, put them at a disadvantage. Because remember, your foreign investor, I mean, he's not just going to South Africa. He's maybe got South Africa, maybe he's got Bhutan, maybe he's got Kenya, maybe he's got New Zealand. And so if one of them is being politically unstable, I mean, I know Thailand's got some weird politics going on, then they'd rather be like, you know what, let's just leave that country alone and go to one of these other ones. So some countries are more more encouraging of foreign investment. I think like Indonesia, they like have advertising, like come invest in our country. You know, they want foreign investment in. Um, but I mean, despite all these things, South Africa does get a lot of foreign investment. I mean, one weird thing is that, I mean, our GDP uh, grows very, very, um, very, very small amounts. I mean, it was, yeah, very small. Yet our stock market, um, I mean, that grew, I, th I don't want to quote numbers because of, I don't want to quote numbers on this video, but basically the GDP grew by a small amount and the stock market grew by a large amount. And that could be because of foreign investment. I mean, a lot of our stocks are owned by, um, have got foreign money in. And this causes a bit of a problem. You don't, I mean, this is my opinion. I mean, foreign investors I love I love free markets. I'm very much a free market guy. Um, but I understand that there is a danger to to foreign investors. Uh, the case being foreign investors come into a country, um, start you know investing, do all of these type of things, and then on a dime notice they can withdraw everything and cause total chaos. I mean, I was reading something about. Um, Puerto Rico, I don't even know how to spell Puerto Rico, I shouldn't even be trying to spell it, but basically Puerto Rico, it's um, this little island state, um, I mean it's got, I don't know if it's American, if it's an American state or I don't know, it's got some weird political thing, but the idea was there was a rule and regulation, something about good tax benefits for, I think it was pharmaceuticals, a lot of pharmaceuticals went into the country, set up pharmaceutical businesses, then there was a tax law changed in some country uh, which removed that benefit and all that capital was sucked out of Puerto Rico and they left in quite a, they, they required such a, a massive bailout. So foreign investors, I mean, like I said, I like free markets, but in a weird way, I understand why South Africa has got these rules and regulations making it difficult for foreign investors. We, we, well, what we do, we want to make it easy for foreign investors to put money in, but we want to make it difficult for them to pull the money out. Foreign investors, if it's difficult for them to pull the money out, they're going to think twice before putting the money in. So it's, it's a very weird re, uh, relationship because foreign investors can help your economy grow. I mean, we see here with the stock market, um, as the stocks increase, um, these companies can now employ more people, they can expand, they can do all these wonderful things. Um, you know, foreign investment is good, but when foreign investment is withdrawn, it's very bad. Um, so you want to kind of keep your, and I mean, and this is the thing is, sometimes if the credit rating agency downgrades us, and this is why it was such a disaster or such, everyone was very nervous in South Africa, is because we were thinking, you know, is this credit rating agency going to downgrade us? And if they downgrade us, then it's no longer just foreign investors' preference for investing in us or not. It becomes against their rules to invest in us. And that means billions and billions of dollars that was flowing in uh, every month suddenly stops. And that can cause a lot of chaos um, to our economy. So foreign investors play a large role in the economic environment of emerging markets such as South Africa. And we have a very heavy reliance on a credit, agents, credit rating agency, which I feel is unfortunate because it's like this little office far away from South Africa um, making decisions that have a very large impact 
um, on our nation. So it's understandable that a country will want to protect itself with rules and regulations, but we need to be careful that we don't create political risk and then scare foreign investors altogether and stunt our, our economic growth. And this makes the job of, say, a financial minister a very big headache. You want to encourage foreign investors, but you want to limit the power that they have on it. So it is kind of like a double-edged sword. It is very uh, difficult to try and balance. I mean, do you want free market or do you want protection? Uh, I mean, both of them can cause disastrous effects. So it, it is a fascinating topic. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to let me know your opinion in, in the comment section below. But um, for the syllabus objective, we just need to know that foreign investors are a big investment class. They are um, worried about currency movements, rules and regulations, and political risk. And they do have quite a big sway in a country such as South Africa. If you're in America, foreign investors will play a different role. Uh, I think there'll be a much smaller role. Um, and you might just have to worry about, say, one or two um, countries, such as maybe, you know, what is China's involvement, you know, that whole Chi America. Um, but it, it does get very interesting. It does get very political. I mean, finance and politics, especially at this globalization level, um, are very much intertwined. So, yeah. I mean, you can go and read books and books and books about foreign investors, but for the financial exam, you do want to be aware of them and you know, maybe think about it. And when answering questions, think what role will foreign investors play and always bring it back to the country that you are writing in. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and check out next time when I'm going to be talking a little bit more on politics in the sense that we're going to be looking at uh, government policies and how that influences the economic environment. Thanks guys for watching. Cheers.